Hi everyone, NZ Tech Freak here again for Android NZ and what we've got for you today is an exclusive first look at this, the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 Smart Dock and before we get underway and show you some of what this can do why don't we start with a brief hardware tour if we open up the lid at the front here you can see the USB port connection and that moves as you can see there, got a bit of movement in that and also the backboard that the phone rests against has movement so that's how this is able to accommodate a Note 2 either with or without a case so very well thought out design there from Samsung if we move along and look at some of the other ports it's got we can see a speaker port, the charging input a full sized HDMI port and on the right hand side of the device two full size USB ports and a third one on the left hand side of the device so the smart dock very flush with connection ports and well thought out little piece of kit from Samsung and it's fairly expensive so I guess we'll move on and show you what it can do so you can decide if it's worth the money so what you can see here is the smart dock with a Galaxy Note 2 sitting in it already obviously and it's already been connected and first thing you'll notice is the docking home screen displayed on the television and connected to the dock on the left hand side there we've got a wireless USB keyboard and mouse so there's a little uh, wireless dongle plugged in there and on the left hand side we've got this device which is of course my powered USB hub and connected to that we've got three different drives a 32 gig pen drive a 250 gig portable drive both of those formatted to FAT32 and finally a 1.5 terabyte drive which is formatted to NTFS which of course doesn't actually run on stock firmware ordinarily for the Note 2 and what I'm holding up there of course is a PS3 controller which we've got occupying the third and final USB port on the dock itself naturally with the hub we've increased it actually to six ports in total so pretty cool stuff and if we move on now from here and hit the back key on the keyboard you'll see the page buddy screen for when you're docked and it's got some pretty cool stuff first of all a little dynamic thing here linked to your calendar showing you how many events you have for the day and down at the bottom the docking icons and the cool thing about these actually is that they're not set to any particular apps by default, uh, but it actually chooses the ones that you use most often when you're docked. If we pull down the shade here, we'll just drop the brightness on the note because uh, we're just wasting battery by having that cranked up. And just go down to a little notification here uh, that says Rotate. Now this is an app called Ultimate Rotation Control, and that's available from the Play Store, and that will let us force the note into landscape orientation so it'll occupy the whole of the HDTV screen. Now that's one of the weaknesses of the dock here actually is that it won't do that by default and you get your kind of letterboxed portrait view which is fairly unsuitable. Uh, if we move right on now just going to show you playing back some video from one of the connected drives in this case the 250 gig portable drive. Naturally, of course, the main application for this is going to be watching high definition content on your HDTV from the phone. So we'll just show you that here with Big Buck Bunny, which is of course 1080p. Hey, Mr. Now one thing I wanted to highlight here for root users who are considering getting the smart dock is an app called Paragon NTFS and HFS Plus which is available from the Play Store. It has a free license that lasts a week and then you have to pay for it. Otherwise there are a few other free options that claim to do a similar thing. And the cool thing about this is for those of you who have large portable drives that are most likely NTFS formatted by default. Um, you'll be able to use those with the Galaxy Note via the setup with an app like Paragon. As I said, it does require root, but if you can cross that hurdle, uh, then it works very well. And so I'm just navigating within the 1.5 terabyte drive here and picking one of the video files from there just to show you that that's working perfectly well. And you see Dice Bag Ranger play that.
just wanted to demonstrate here just some of the things that you can do when you're able to mirror the full display of the phone rather than just media content to an external display like an HDTV here. And that's just things like browsing work really well. And given that the Note has a 720p screen that's been mirrored, it's really quite a good experience, especially when you, you're navigating with a, a USB wireless keyboard and mouse. Uh, similar to what I've shown with a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse via MHL and some of my other videos. So as you can see here, working really well. And the fact that the keyboard hotkeys work is great. Uh, a real assistance here. And other things too, like uh, multi-touch gestures on the touchpad will actually work and allow you to scroll up and down pages, which is really nice. And just moving on from there, you know, naturally... It's all well and good to browse in your mobile browser on your HDTV, but sometimes you want to do a bit more than that, maybe browse in a desktop browser or do something kind of productivity related, which is still difficult to do on a smartphone despite the presence of uh, apps like Quick Office that will let you edit and view Word and PowerPoint documents and so forth. And so what I'm showing here is an RDP app called Splashtop that's available in the Play Store, of course. And what you're looking at here is my desktop and the desktop has been mirrored to my Galaxy Note 2 and controlled from there and that in turn has been mirrored to the HDTV via the smart dock. So it sounds like a fairly convoluted setup but actually it's, it's not that bad and as you can see really quite a desktop like experience when you've got a keyboard and mouse to work with as well particularly when that keyboard and mouse has uh, Windows specific hotkeys like the one that I'm using here and Splashtop, one of the notable things about Splashtop is that it's able to accept external inputs where a lot of other uh, RDP apps fall down unless you've got a Windows professional build on the, the host desktop or laptop PC and what I'm showing in the background here is just a YouTube video running and ordinarily this works with sound uh, via Splashtop another sort of feather in Splashtop's cap but as you can see here I'm having some issues because I haven't actually turned on the USB uh, sound card that's connected to my computer so there's not going to be any sound here but ordinarily that works and it works well and on a good connection you can even uh, stream games and play games with a setup like this which of course with a controller is going to be really quite a workable setup so that's what I wanted to show you there Finally, the last thing I wanted to show here was just, of course, some emulator gaming. So this is uh, FPSC from the Play Store running Tekken 3. And, of course, I'm going to be controlling that with a PS3 controller, which is connected via a wired connection to the smart dock. So I'm going to run with this and then show you some Nintendo 64 gaming as well. I just wanted to close now with some thoughts about the smart dock having used it for a couple of days and I think the first big question is really is the smart dock worth the fairly steep initial asking price of $100 and really you can only answer that with a few other questions and I think the first and most important one is what's the longevity of this device going to be is Samsung going to use this as a standard sort of docking accessory for later handsets or not? I think if the answer is yes, and you could reasonably expect to use this with future Samsung handsets for, say, you know, the next several years, then of course it becomes a fairly good value proposition to purchase it. If the answer is no, then of course it's much worse value for money if it's specifically for the Note 2. But I guess people who are really desperate for this functionality or who are, say, locked into a two-year contract and know they're going to be using the Note 2 for some time, may still find it worth their while to grab the dock. In terms of what Samsung's done well with the dock, I really like the, the sort of hardware design and the thought that's been put into that. Uh, it's got an articulating dock connection so that it can accept a Galaxy Note 2 to be 
docked whether it's got a case on or not that's really nice the fact that it's got three full-size usb ports is also nice and as i showed you you can even expand on those with external usb hubs so from that point of view i think things are really quite well done uh, the disappointments really come on the software front uh, i guess the most major one being the fact that it defaults to a portrait orientation when you're docked which means a lot of wasted screen real estate on your external monitor with those really big letterboxes and while you can fix that with apps from the market and apps from the market that don't require a root you know it still would have been nice if Samsung had just thought that out a little bit better before releasing the smart dock there's a few other little niggling things as well um, one of the other ones being that it doesn't blank the screen when you're docked uh, it doesn't even blank the screen when you're playing media when it's docked which some things like the all share cast dongle will do so as you're docked if you're doing intensive things like high def definition video playback or sort of intensive 3d gaming the charge on the note will still trickle down despite the fact that it is charging while it's docked so little disappointments like that just sort of detract from the, the polish of the device on the software front. Now despite those disappointments with some of the software implementation of the Smart Dock, I do have to say that overall I feel very positive about my time with it over the last couple of days and certainly it's something that I personally would get a lot of use out of. So after I return this one to Samsung I'll certainly be looking to track one down for myself. You know, Your mileage may vary and that's going to depend largely upon the sort of use case scenarios that you might have for a piece of kit like this. But for those who are interested in the functionality it offered, I think you'll find that it's going to suit you really well. So that was all we had for you today. Just a kind of quick first look at the uh, Galaxy Note 2 Smart Dock from Samsung, which offers simultaneous USB device connections while mirroring the phone's display via HDMI to an external monitor or HDTV. So that's all we had for you today, NZ Tech Freak. Once again, over and out for Android NZ.